So acids and bases can appear on both the physical and biological sections of the MCAT, and this video will touch on both. Basically, I'll be discussing the acid-base relationship and how you can use trends in stability to rank different compounds based on their acidities. So to start off, all of the trends I'll be touching on in this video have to do with the acidity-basicity-stability relationship. As you'll recall, the stronger an acid, the weaker its conjugate base, and vice versa. The weaker an acid, the stronger its conjugate base. By acid strength, I mean it's pKa, and this is more or less a measure of how readily it will give up a proton. Stronger acids have lower pKa's. And when I talk about pKa, I mean for a single, specific proton, not for the molecule as a whole. Uh, think about your acidic amino acids. The protons that it can give off each have distinct pKa's. So a strong acid has a weak conjugate base, and this makes sense, because if the base were strong, it would want to hold on to that proton. So what makes a base weak? Stability does. The weaker a base, the more stable it is. Conversely, the stronger a base, the less stable it is. So a weak base, Cl-, the conjugate base of HCl, is stable. It's fine with that negative charge. A strong base, OH-, is not stable. It needs something to balance out that negative charge. So on the MCAT, you should really have the relationship of stronger acid equals weaker base equals more stable base down. And all of these trends that I'll touch on in this video have that one similarity. They're all about stability. They just achieve it in different ways. So first up is electronegativity. And this trend is that for atoms of a similar size, that is, atoms in the same row on the periodic table, more electronegative ones have more acidic hydrogens. So here's a periodic table. I got this from Wikipedia, so all credit to them. On the left, I have a list of good electronegativities to know for the MCAT. These are approximate. Definitely no fluorine is the highest at 4, and that electronegativity decreases from there, both down and to the left on the periodic table. If you don't remember anything else, just remember that. You can see that when comparing these examples here. HF, hydrofluoric acid, has a pKa of 3. And you should know it as the only halide acid that is weak, that doesn't fully dissociate in water. It's the strongest acid of this group because fluorine is the most electronegative element. Water's pKa is about 15, NH3, ammonia, you probably know as a base, its pKa is around 45, and methane has a pKa of about 60. Again, because nitrogen and carbon have success, successively lower electronegativities. So why is this? Getting back to stability, more electronegative atoms want negative charge. They like it and are better able to stabilize it. So when a proton dissociates, the negative charge on the conjugate base is more stable on those atoms that want it to begin with. So could, to compare F- to OH-, F- is perf perfectly fine as an ion, but OH- isn't. And that's why OH- is actually a strong base. NH2- would be even stronger, and can you even imagine CH3-? I think it only exists under Grignard-like conditions, not as an actual uh, conjugate base ion. So moving on to hybridization. Hybridization also affects acidity, but really it's just the same as electronegativity. This one is really quick and easy. Basically, sp hybridized atoms are more acidic than sp2, which are more acidic than sp3, because sp are more electronegative than sp2, which are more electronegative than sp3. Next up we have size, and all you need to know is that size matters. For the MCAT, if that's all you remember, then you should be good to go, but I'll explain why size matters. So we'll talk about our halogen acids, HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. Now, these are not to scale, but the trend is that as size increases, so does acidity. Uh, and this is another periodic table trend. So as you go down any one group or column in the periodic table, acidity increases. So HCl, HBr, and HI are strong acids. They all fully dissociate in solution, but HF is a weak acid. It doesn't fully dissociate. Now, why is this? Again, we'll look at it from a stability standpoint. When the proton dissociates, it leaves behind its conjugate base that has a negative charge. Again, these are not to scale. But in each case, it's still just the same amount of charge. It's just one electron. The difference is in the conjugate base's volumes. The same amount of charge is spread out over a larger volume for the larger elements, which decreases overall charge density, therefore increasing stability. 
This explains why HI is the most acidic because I minus is the most is is the most stable and HF the least acidic. Now, which matters more, electronegativity or size? Here's the periodic table again with the electronegativities of oxygen and chlorine. 3.5 and, and 3.2 are close enough to make a comparison based on size alone. Obviously, HCl is much more acidic than water, and that's because chlorine is much larger than oxygen, and size trumps electronegativity up to a point. Uh, for instance, HF still has a lower pKa than, say, H2S, hydrogen sulfide. Even though sulfur is larger than fluorine, its electronegativity is much lower. Uh, but as a general rule, size matters and size does trump electronegativity. So next up we have inductive electron withdrawal or induction. You'll see induction again in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions when talking about substituent effects and whether they are ortho, para, or meta directing. When I say some of these substituents withdraw electrons inductively and deactivate the ring, it's the same thing as what they are doing here. So this is sort of the classic example of teaching it. Here we have a halide, in this case fluorine, substituted carboxylic acid on the right and just a regular carboxylic acid on the left. The hydrogen on the fluoride substituted acid will have a lower pKa as a result of induction. Due to the halogen's high electronegativity, it pulls electrons through the molecule away from the hydrogen, which not only stabilizes the conjugate base, but makes it more likely for the proton to dissociate. So there are some different cases of induction that I'll discuss. First of all, how close the halogen is to the proton matters. The closer it is, the more of a pull it can exert. So the one on the left is more acidic because its fluorine is one carbon closer. The type of halogen matters. The more electronegative the element, the more of a pull it has. So the fluoride acid will be more acidic than the chloride. A chloride would be more acidic than a bromide. And finally, how many halogens are substituted matters. More halogens equals more pull, so the one on the right will be more acidic. It's pretty simple. Now, all three of these factors can play together. Obviously, it's going to be tough to discern between the relative acidities of, say, a chloride-substituted carbon-2 versus a fluoride-substituted carbon-3 or 4. And you might think, well, chlorine isn't as electronegative as fluorine, but it is closer. Hmm. And I can't tell you which one is more acidic in that case off the top of my head. But the MCAT won't ask you things like this in a standalone question. If they do, it would have to be passage-based. Uh, in which case, there's bound to be informa information in the passage to help you figure it out. So that's inductive electron withdrawal. Finally, we have resonance stabilization or delocalization. On the left is cyclohexanol with a pKa of about 16, and on the right is phenol, whose hydrogen has a pKa of about 10, which makes it rather acidic. Now, what accounts for this difference? As you can see with the conjugate base of cyclohexanol, the electrons are localized. That is, they all belong to just the oxygen. They just stay there. They don't have anywhere else to go. But with phenol, the electrons are delocalized. They have quite a few places to go. There are four resonance structures for phenol, and typically the more structures, the more stable something is. And remember, none of these structures actually exist. The real thing is an average of them. This is just what we use to represent resonance. And by delocalizing the charge, the charge density decreases, which is what accounts for the conjugate base being more stable and is why phenol is more acidic than cyclohexanol. So in effect, resonance and size are very similar. They both decrease charge density, and thereby increasing acidity. Uh, so that's it. Here are a few questions. As always, pause the video here while you work on them, as the answer slide will appear in about five seconds, so pause it now. And here are the answers. Pause again to review, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to address those in the comment section of this video, and I'll get back to you. So, pretty simple and intuitive concepts here, but make sure you really know them. Acidity is just all about stability of the conjugate base, and that's the key to understanding this subject. Uh, so that's it. Next up will be periodic trends, which has much more of a general chemistry focus. So, until then.